way, YouTubers. We're heading that way. Bear Lake encompasses this valley in front of us. It straddles the Utah-Idaho border. It's a beautiful lake, but you can't hardly see it right now. You certainly can't see the eastern shore. Just make out the lake a little bit in there. This is a little summit rest area. We just got through Logan Canyon. It's also a boat check. People going down into the Bear Lake. Had some things that normally ride well. Didn't ride so well. So I replaced the springs on the truck. Set of springs and shackles. They're sitting right there, all ready to get installed. With 4,200 pound leaf springs, giving us a little bit more of a bouncy ride. It's the only way to really describe it. With our previous springs, we sat down on those timberins and didn't didn't have a lot of give there. I wanted to put those 4,200 pound springs to give us a little bit more give, soften the uh, the ride between the truck and the trailer a little bit. We solved one problem and created another. You done cleaning it up in there? Well, our aim is to make it to Laramie, Wyoming tonight. Did a little research on Gas Buddy, and there's a, a fuel station there that's selling diesel for $2.99 a gallon. So, you know, you take it where you can get it. Those savings, right, babe? I hope so. Let's hope so. Off we go. One eternity later. How was the ride to Laramie? Good. I'm glad to be done. Yeah, it was about 400 miles today, a little over 400 miles today. And we're going to overnight here in this uh, vacant lot. Hopefully we don't get a knock on the door. We should. Yeah, well, I hope not. Because we'll know it by morning. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. We are in a vacant lot in Laramie, Wyoming, that was recommended to us by our nephew, Laramie. Yes. He's a truck driver. So he knows where a lot of these types of places are to, to overnight. What exit are we on? We are on exit 311, and we're on the south side of the highway. As you can see, great big vacant lot. There's truck parking at the little truck stop over there, but we didn't want to interfere with that, so we came over here. Literally right across on the north side of the highway from us is the Laramie Territorial Historical Prison Site women's prison was it a, I, I think it's women's prison site well it's a historical site it's a fee area and we we looked at that yesterday because we saw a bunch of rvs over there the reason there were a bunch of rvs over there is because there's a dump and fill station right so that's awfully convenient that you can dump and fill and drive across the street and park but no overnight camping in that parking lot right. so although the, the rvs were over there dumping and filling but that's why we ended up right here. Now the Walmart here in Laramie apparently used to be uh, friendly to RV overnighting, but they are no longer. Angie actually called them and they said, nope, uh, we, we kick them out at night, so. So good to know. There's that. Anyways, our next destination is a Walmart. We're gonna try to head to Seward, Nebraska, which is about 450 miles, and overnight in that Walmart, which is still RV friendly and uh, go from there. Yeah, we'll see. So come along. If there's anything of interest, we'll uh, we'll let you know. What are you doing? Crocheting what I'm always doing. So we stopped here around mile marker 50. I'm not exactly sure what it is at the Sydney Eastbound Rest Area. Taking a little break, kick the tires. There's a little bit of information up there on the rest area about the pioneers trekking across Nebraska, kind of interesting. Uh, we don't have a, a lot of time to explore those areas right now as we're just kind of in transit. It's wet here. It is wet. Block off a certain area of the rest area due to some pooling. And one thing we certainly haven't outrun yet is the smoke from California getting tired of that four packs of California smoke a day. What are you thinking? That's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, we'll keep on keeping on.
Well, good morning, everybody. We are at the Seward Walmart. Seward, Nebraska. In Seward, Nebraska. And uh, spent the night here. Pretty peaceful night. Yeah, but I did. Someone mentioned on the reviews that there was a train. I faintly did hear a train, but it was not obnoxious by any means. Faintly? It was right over that cornfield. It was... It, there were several trains during the night. Was there? Oh yeah, that's okay though. I didn't hear them, but I guess I'm used to lava. Lava is very train noisy. That's true. But uh, we went into Walmart last night, talked to with, uh, Jane in customer service, and she was very nice. And said it was no problem to overnight here. Bought some ice cream. Watched a little, uh, what was that? What were we watching then? Oh, FBI? No, no, that was the night before. We were watching that uh, Cook Master, the Gordon Master Ramsay, Chef. Gordon Ramsay thing. But yes, Master Chef. Anyways, and uh, today we're gonna head on down the road and try to get to the largest truck stop in the world, at, in Wolcott, Wolcott, Iowa. That's where we're gonna overnight tonight. So okay, I was Anyways, like, I don't know where we're going. It's about 360 miles from here, but. So it's a little bit shorter day, but I guess that's good. We're leaving a little later. We stopped in uh, Waco, Nebraska and filled up at $289. Yes. At least the diesel prices are, uh, I guess you can say, somewhat reasonable. I mean, heck, that's almost a dollar cheaper than what it is at home. But uh, anyways, all right. Well, if we see anything fun, we'll point it out to you. We're off like a herd of turtles. And we have corn on this side. On both sides of the road. It's corn. Somebody, corn. somebody said that if you're in Nebraska and you get up on your tippy toes and look really hard, you can see the back of your head. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a lot of corn. Well, we've made it to the Iowa 80 largest truck stop in the world and uh, interestingly enough um, there's a, a section here where it's RVs only it's just one row really but well, I don't uh, know if it's meant for RVs only but that's all that's in there well the, 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 the sign right over there said uh, no semis in this area right. and there are no semis in this area but there's a row of of RVs and yeah. this is where we'll spend the night we've got oh, if you can see it right over there a little sign that says world's largest truck stop and then right over here behind me is the trucking museum which interestingly enough I just a week ago I watched a video uh, from Scotty and Melinda of simple life big adventure so we're following in your footsteps Scotty and Melinda we're gonna go over and check that out it won't be as lengthy of a video as you made on it so for those that are interested in a more lengthy video, I'm sure, go check out Scotty and Melinda's video and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And I just want to point out one of the reasons why we really enjoy the fact that we don't have to open up a slide when we are at a rest area or a parking lot. As you can see behind me, those two trailers just pulled in. and There's not a lot of room between us. As a matter of fact, even if we had that more ride step that say Jeremy and Laramie both have there wouldn't be enough room to to put that out without it extending into the lane next and that could be an issue for somebody pulling in up alongside us see if we had our steps out that could be a problem the next day well we came over here this morning to do a quick walk through the the truck museum All right yes we better be quick good morning hello here. Yes. Both well, either of you would like, we have a guest book. You're more than welcome to sign. No fee to walk through. We welcome donations if you'd like. And pictures are welcome. Please, no touching trucks, exhibits, or crossing over chains or fences, though. All right. All right thanks. Okay, you enjoy. Let us know if you have any questions. Will do. Top speed, 10 miles an hour. Nineteen thirty Mac AC coal truck. Tanker truck kind of. And here we have a Ford F two fifty from the year of my birth. We are the same age. 
1952 custom cattle truck. 1981 Kenworth K100 Aerodyne Hanks Highway Hilton. Over the years, Hank won over a hundred awards with this truck. He installed over 200 auxiliary lights on it. It's a 1939 International D15 armored truck. That's pretty cool. Here you go, Tom and Lori. This was a logging truck used in Truckee, California. And 1930 and a 1947 Studebaker. A 1930 Ford A snowmobile utilized to get the mail through well have a coke and a smile well what'd you think i thought it was a great stop and walk through and interesting that they have vehicles from all over the place i really like the salt flats run truck the salt flax run truck was your favorite yeah well i don't know there was lots to choose from yeah there were some really interesting trucks in there it was cool makes you want to create your own automobile museum uh, uh, yeah no <laughs> and it was free yes but uh you know donations were welcome and we we made a donation yeah. and we bought a patch and a pin yeah. so sorry about the noise but we are at a truck stop well, thanks for joining us for this jaunt across the Midwest. In our next video, we make it to Middlebury, Indiana. Clippy cloppy, clippy cloppy. You know, we're used to seeing horses in northern Utah, but not those Amish car carriers. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and follow Angie, Jazz, and I on our journey. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you down the road.